Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday. I pray that you all are well this morning. Let's celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. If you're in your homes and you're live with us right now, just lift up a hand clap of praise because God has given you another day that you can live in Him. Another day that you can say, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to awaken and see a brand new day. It is Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus Christ took on a coat and an ass and rolled through as people laid down palms saying, Hosanna, blessed be Hosanna, King of Kings. Well, we know the story that they praised him on Palm Sunday. And before the next Sunday, he was crucified. But this morning, we have come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ as we come into this time of solemn assembly. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift up them, lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Well, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts is the king of glory. Let us now um, enter with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come into this time of worship, we pray that every heart, every mind be lifted up before you, Father, that you will get the glory out of our lives, Father. Prepare our hearts and our mind that we may be able to hear your word on this morning. And may it bring life to those that hear it. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that you kept us on yesterday and you brought us into today. And Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over ourselves from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Asking that you'll perfect all things that concerns us. Father God, we remember those that are in the hospitals, those who are upon their bed of affliction. Father, we know you to be a healer and a deliverer. So, Father God, we pray that you'll be a very present help in the time of need. Lord, I pray blessings upon those who are homeless, those that don't know where they will receive their next meal, Father God. I thank you that you are a provider and that you're able to touch the hearts of those, able to touch the hands of those, able to touch the resources of those that you have made to be stewards of you in this earth. So, Father God, we pray for even those that are behind prison walls. We remember them, Father. We pray that their souls will be saved. And, Lord, that you'll protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Because our prison system, um, they're being occupied and not occupied at the same time. They're being held in, but there's no one to watch over them. So, Father God, we pray divine protection over those who are in the prison system. And, Lord, we pray for those who are in spiritual bondage. We pray that they will find liberty in you, Christ Jesus. We pray that sin shackles will be broken, O oh God, that change will come to our hearts and our mind, and that we will pursue you with every part of our being. And Lord, we speak blessings upon every person that will minister your holy and righteous word on today. May it be ministering it through the teaching, the teaching or preaching of your word, or even those who will sing your word, Father God. May you be on a May you be praised and may you be glorified. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that I pray. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah, I sing the highest praise. Hallelujah, Halle, hallelujah, hallelujah, Halle, Halle, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap. Your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. What is the highest praise? Hallelujah. We sing the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and praise the Lord with me. 
Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord right where you are. Lift up a hallelujah right where you are. Lift up the highest praise to the Most High God. Because I don't know what you went through on yesterday. But how many know that you made it through? I don't know what you went through the day before yesterday. But how many know that you made it through? It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. You have a new day to give God the glory. To give Him honor and to give Him praise. Now, it may seem strange that you may not be in the local assembly in the traditional church, but you're sitting in your household. And how many know that it's not the building that's the church, it's the children of God. We are the holy temple. So right where you are, come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Right where you are, lift up a hallelujah. Right where you are, say thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Glory to the Most High God. Lord, you are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the praise. And for this, we give you praise. Let us now have our, um, our scripture reading this morning will be about love. And it will be coming from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And it reads, Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I be became a man, mankind, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And now about faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. And charity is love. We thank God for the reading of his holy and righteous word. We thank God for the reading of his holy and righteous word. As we prepare our hearts for the word i would like to lift up a song of praise as it's my personal personal worship to god i love you i love you i love you lord today because you care for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise i love a love I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Oh, because 
you care for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i leave you up and i magnify your name and that's why my heart is filled with praise my heart my mind my soul belongs to you my heart my mind my soul belongs to you you the price for me way back in Calvary that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify magnify your name that's why my heart that's why my Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that we have come to the time of your word. I pray that Phadrian would decrease and that you would increase by your Holy Spirit. That you would give revelation, that you would give rhema. Father God, that you will allow me to go into your storehouse, Father God. And pull out what you will have for me to minister to your people on today. Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that my life is in your hands. And Lord, because I am a vessel to be used by you, Father God, I don't stand as Phadrian, but I stand as your mouthpiece. I stand as your representative, Father God. So may you be honored. May you be glorified. May you be praised. And may you get the glory out of my posture before you, Father God. And this I decree and declare in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And amen. This morning's um sermon topic is knowing god's will for those for your first time being in this worship service we are faith church international and we have a purpose to teach the who what why of the christian faith to teach those biblical principles that will teach us how to live upright before god well, how can we live upright before God that we do not know? And we cannot do that which we do not know. So, the power to fulfill is the power to define. And this morning, we want to speak about knowing God's nature. If we have a scripture text this morning, it will be 1 John, the 4th chapter, verse 7 through 8, will be our beginning scripture. And it reads, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Um, that is 1 John, the 4th chapter, verses 7 through 8. Let us read that again. 1 John, the 4th chapter, verse 7 through 8. We're um, teaching this morning on knowing God's nature. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. So we're going to look at three um, attributes of God's nature and his will this morning. And our first one is God is love. God is love. Our second nature that we will discuss this morning is God is all knowing. And our third is God is all powerful. God is all powerful. Well, we read 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 7 through 8. But also, according to 1 John 4 16, God is love. Just to think about love, sometimes um, as parents, 
we can discipline our children, correct them, and tell them the right way to go. And sometimes when we are instructing our children on what to do and what not to do, sometimes they feel like, oh, you picking on me and you must not love me. But how many know that a parent's love does not change? Um, our love should remain steadfast even when we are disciplining our natural children. And that being the case, we know that God is, his love is perfect towards us and his love is unconditional. The reason why I stated about um, instructing your children in which way to go, because many times we, as God's children, we don't always want to go the way that he tells us to go. Sometimes we want to create our own pathway. We want to do our own thing. But today we need to know that God loves us so much that he won't just allow us to remain in error. He won't allow us to keep walking to the left when he has told us to go to the right. In God's divine love, in his perfect love, in his unconditional love, the scripture does not say that God just loves, but that he is love. Love is the very nature of God. God's very nature is love god can never function contrary to his own nature i believe that it's worth repeating god can never function contrary to his nature never in your life will god ever express that he his will towards you except that it is expressed in perfect love even when god say baby um you need to stop doing that. He'll he'll send a sister say, um, sis, you you need to um stop doing that, sis. And when she said, she's saying in love because God is using her. Even when we read the scripture, God um is a loving a God of loving kindness. God's kind of love always seek the very best for every person. Yes, I said for every person. It's God's nature. He even loved the sinner man. He loved the sinner man so much that he died on the cross for us. Therefore, he can never give you his second best. He always give us his very best. His nature will not allow him to give us a second class type of position, second place position. He's always given us the very best. Even when God brings discipline, when God brings judgment, and even when God brings wrath on those who continue to sin and remain in rebellion, even in his discipline, he does it in love. It is based out of love. Hebrews 12, 6 says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Yes. God does discipline us. He does correct us. He does call us to walk upright in him. He calls us to live above the world standard, to live according to his kingdom standards. Yes, we have another scripture about God being love. Well, what did love do? For God so loved the world that he gave. Let's pause. God so loved the world that he gave. He's a giving father. That is a part of his nature as well. But what did he give? He gave his only begotten son. And by this we know love because he laid down his life for us. That's 1 John 3.16. So first of all we learn that God is love. Because he gave his only begotten son, St. John 3.16. Then 1 John 3.16 echo the love back to us again. By this we know love. We know him. Because he laid down his life for you and I. Our trust in the love and in the nature of God is vital. It is crucial for our relationship in him. See, I was speaking about knowing God's nature. Well, you may ask, well, Elder, why is the trusting in the love nature of God is vital and crucial? Well, that leads us back to 
our opening scripture, 1 John 4, 7 through 8, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. But he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So in order for us to be a child of the Most High God, we must possess his love and know love. We must know God because love is the very nature of God. This has to be a powerful influence in our life. Well, what must be a powerful influence in our life? Love. God must be that powerful influence in our life. I never look on circumstances without seeing them on the backdrop of the cross. Everything that we, that God did takes us to the cross. That is where God clearly demonstrated once and for all his deep love for each and every one of us. It was in this sacrifice that we now have a love relationship with God. And that determines everything that we do. Our love relationship with God determines everything that we do. We must love him so much that we will love our brothers even when they despitefully use us. We must love our brothers and sisters even though they may not understand how and why we love the living God. They may not always understand why we have a passion to speak his word and why we always speak about him. They may not understand why we quote holy rollers, but to love him is the very essence of who he is and who we are to be in him. Because God is love, therefore we should love. Because God is love, we are commanded not only to love God, but to also love one another. Now sometimes, Pastor Peg, you know, sometimes we like to look over our brothers and sisters and, and, skip, and skip to God. But he says that we are to be lovers of one another. This is a gift. This is what we are purposed to do in the earth as his children. We're talking about knowing the nature of God. We spoke about the nature of God is his love. That is his very best. Our second nature that we will discuss this morning is knowing that God is all-knowing. He is omniscient. God's nature is he is omniscient. That is, he is all-knowing. He possesses all knowledge, past, present, and future. Yes, he knows the things that you experienced in your past. He knows where you are today, and he knows what your tomorrow is. Even before you ever enter into your future, God has already prepared and purposed you to succeed and walk in great success. There is nothing outside of the knowledge of God. When God expresses himself to us, his directions are always correct. His, correction, his directions are always upright. When God gives you a directive, you can count on the fact that God has already considered every factor that must be considered. You will never follow a directive that God has given you and find out later that God must have been mistaken. I believe that stands to be repeated. You, you and I, would never follow a directive that God has given us to fulfill and find out later that God must have been mistaken. His directions are always right. The church must realize and we must accept that the directives of God may not be what we want them to be. They may not always be pleasant to our physical bodies. They may not always be pleasant to our flesh. Have you ever asked God to give you several alternatives when it comes to things that you want to do? So you can choose the one that is best for you. Have you ever, um, how many of those options when you ask, does God have to give you so you will have the right one? 
let me pause right there because we need to think about that sometimes when we're doing things we will ask god to give us options to give us alternatives well should i do a b or c but when it comes to god we can always count on plan a whatever he gives for us to do we don't have to have a plan b or a plan c and i have um seen this to be so concerning um my mother uh, my mother is in the hospital and people been asking well what you gonna do if this doesn't happen and i said that it's always been plan a it's always been plan a because when god spoke through my mouth that she would be raised up off that bed of affliction i believed it when he spoke it in my spirit and i believed it when i released it out of my mouth so god always gets it right the first time you don't have to have multiple options when it comes to god you never have to have a plan b and a plan c now if steve harvey can tell you that he always go with plan a then we as children of god also should know that we can always count on the first thing that god tells us to do as we seek to know and do god's will you will want to wait before him until you clearly know what his will is and his directions for carrying it out now you must have there's a time between god telling you you hearing what god says and then you getting a picture a fuller picture of what he will have for you to do for example it was in 2017 that i definitively know that god told me that faith church international was a ministry well, when he first gave it to me, it was Faith Tabernacle was the name that I was writing in school assignments. Well, you may say, well, if you knew in 2017 that Faith Church was a ministry, why is it now you're in 2022 and this is only the second worship service of Faith Church International? Just what I spoke. As you seek to know and do God's will, you will want to wait before him until you clearly know his will and his directions for carrying it out. See, human wisdom and knowledge will never be adequate enough. But God's wisdom and knowledge is always adequate. You will not have to argue with God about whether his will is the right choice or the right course of action. Even when his will doesn't make sense from our human perspective, your obedience will reveal your obedience. Our obedience will reveal that his will is always right. Now we can stop right there and praise God that his will is always right. Right. We're speaking about the nature of God. We've already spoken that God's nature is love. The second nature of God that we're discussing this morning is God nature is all knowing. And our third and final nature that we will look at this morning is God is all powerful. We've been speaking um, in our Bible study about the attributes of God. And one of God's attributes is he is omnipotent. That is, he is all powerful. He is all powerful. See, when you connect it to the right power source, hallelujah, you can just thank and praise God when you know that you're connected with the power source. You can rejoice and praise God when you're connected to the one who knows all and sees all things and that he can change the course even if it's not going in the right direction he's able to steer us in the right direction god is all powerful he was able to create the world out of nothing yes that's called all powerful he can accomplish anything he purposed to do because he's all powerful in fact he says that he will my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure it's him that does his pleasures indeed i have spoken it i will also bring it to pass i have purposed it and i will also do it that is isaiah 46 verses 10 through 11. if he ever asks you to do something he himself will enable you to do it 
anything that God asks you to do, child of God, he will enable you to do it. Well, God has given us some biblical references that we can look at to encourage us as we're on our faith walk. God enabled Noah and his sons to build a huge boat that spared the lives of every animal species during the great flood. This is found in Genesis the 6th chapter through the ninth chapter. God enabled Gideon and 300 men to defeat an army of 120,000. This can be found in Judges verse chapter 7 through 8. Christ Jesus enabled his 12 disciples to heal people and to cast out demons. We can find this in Matthew 10. We're talking about God being all powerful and him being all powerful. He allows us to operate in that power. And then we have the apostle Paul. God enabled Paul to carry the gospels to the Gentiles. Talking about you and I. And he established churches throughout Asia Minor. And all the way to Rome, he went from Asia Minor all the way to Rome. His calling was set forth in Acts the ninth chapter. His missionary journey was in Acts the 13th chapter, verse 28, 13 through 28. Now you and I, our story is being written as well. I want you to know that when your life is in the middle of God's activity, he will start rearranging a lot of your thinking. He will begin to make your thoughts line up with his thoughts. He will begin to make your way line up with his ways. For God's ways and thoughts are so different from yours and mine that they will often sound wrong, crazy, or impossible. Sometimes people say, oh, Oh, that's crazy faith. Well, that's what kind of the kind of faith that you have. That faith that know that impossible can be accomplished. That kind of faith that goes against against the grain of what we have always known. Often you will realize that the task is far beyond your power. It's far beyond your resources to accomplish. That which God gives you to do, the vision is always greater than you can never imagine. It's, it's greater than your resources. It's greater than even you. But God, the one who gives to you to do it, he will make way for it to be accomplished. Once again, if God ever asks you to do something, if God ever gives you a charge to accomplish something, he will enable you to do it. Faith Church International is a manifestation because God told me and therefore I listen and I obey and I trust him. When you recognize that the task is humanly impossible, you need to be ready to believe God and trust him completely. Yes, Father God, we trust you completely with our life because you are all powerful. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that it's through your three characteristics that we've studied this morning that your nature have a significant influence on our life it has an influence on our knowing and our doing what your will is and lord because you are love you will always give us your very best and as we follow and we purpose to obey you father god with our life we know we can trust you to always direct us in your ways, the way that is best for you and for the world into which you have called us to minister to. Because you are all knowing, Father God, we know that there is never a question that we can present to you that you're not able to answer. There is never a question that we, that we have to question your rightness of your direction. We never have to question you, Father God, we are so, when we are surrendered to your directives. And Lord, we thank you that your directions are always right because you are all powerful. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that you have given us the ability, the strength, the resources, and that you have always also given us a righteous influence 
to be able to speak your word, Father God. And those who are in need of a Savior, that they will have a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. And your word says that when we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. So, Father God, as we come to this time, we are praying for those that do not know you, Father God. If there's anyone that is on this line that have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the invitation is now open that you can receive him now. All we have to do is believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you have a relation, you have committed to God and you have fallen away, maybe during the pandemic because many church services were closed and you were not able to be in regular attendance and you found that your faith walk also may have suffered a loss of connectivity because of not being connected in the fellowship of the saints we thank you for being in this time of worship and if you need a church home a kingdom family to connect to i offer faith church international as we are new ministry and we need those who will be vision carriers those who will be vision implementers because i know that god gave me the vision but i cannot do it alone so if you're encouraged um to be a part of a new ministry building from the ground up we welcome you to faith church international all you have to do is respond to me directly you can respond to my inbox or you can respond on this live feed and i will respond to you um directly after service thank you for joining us for this time of ministry I pray that the word has found you well. I pray that the word has given life to you. As we have um, discussed this morning, knowing God's nature. And to know him is to also be a part of him. Thank you, um, Cousin John. Thank you, Valerie, um, for participating. Thank you, Pastor Peggy. Um, thank you, Brother Anthony. Thank you to all of those. I can't see every name. But thank you for joining us for this worship service. Please join us on next Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Even though we're coming to the close of this time of ministry, please like, tag, share, that others may be able to hear the word of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I speak blessings upon each and every hearer of your word. May it bring life unto us. Even as we depart from this time of worship, Father God, we do not depart from your presence, O oh God. We're ever careful to give you all the glory, all the praise that's due unto your holy and righteous name. Lord, we speak blessings of deliverance right now to come forth into every household that is in this live and those who will listen in. Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that sin shackles are being broken right now by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power of your word. Lord, I thank you, O oh God, that you are strong and mighty. Lord, that you're letting your love go forth. Love on them, Father God. May they receive this virtual hug that I'm sending out, Father God. That they will know that you love them because you sent me to speak to them this morning. That they will know, Father God, that you're all knowing because you knew exactly what they needed this morning. Because you are all powerful, Father God. You're able to reach them just where they are. And this we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And to God be the glory. God loves you, and so do I. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Amen. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done, what he's done, what he's done for me. Oh.